Welcome to the Gary DeMar Show. And uh, Jane Fonda is back in the news. Uh, some of you from a younger generation may not know who Jane Fonda is, but uh, she comes from a celebrated uh, acting family. Uh, her father is Henry Fonda, who has uh, uh, Grapes of Wrath. He's most noted for that role, but he's been in many, many roles throughout his life. His the last film role was on Golden Pond, in which his daughter, Jane Fonda, um, was uh, uh, also starred in. Uh, Jane Fonda has won uh, two Academy Awards. Uh, she has done exercise videos for a number of years. So long before it became fashionable, uh, Jane Fonda was in, in exercise mode. She is most noted for a uh, 1972 uh, episode in North Vietnam where she sat on uh, some North Viet Vietnamese uh, 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 military equipment and she was immediately dubbed Hanoi Jane and, and uh, came back with all types of fanciful stories about how uh, American POWs were treated very nicely in North Vietnam and so forth. So she's been in the forefront both in the acting community and as well in the uh, public domain in terms of making statements regarding very controversial issues for quite some time. Uh, she was married to Ted Turner, uh, the, the media mogul here in the Atlanta, uh, Georgia area. And uh, it, it was actually stated that because Jane Fonda became a Christian, uh, that, that really that's what, what uh, uh, rubbed their relationship raw, and she ended up, he and uh, Jane, Jane Fonda divorced. That was her third marriage. It's my understanding J Jane Fonda, who is 71, is about to be married again to a man younger than her, who is, this man is 67. But... Uh, Jane Fonda has a blog, and on her most recent blog, she has been talking about the abortion issue. Uh, now, what's interesting about all this is that Jane Fonda uh, claims to be a Christian, uh, but in reality has, has taken some very, very anti-Christian positions, especially on the issue of abortion. She is very pro-abortion. She makes no bones about that. She uh, has won the Margaret Sanger Award uh, given to her by Planned Parenthood, which is the the nation's largest pro-abortion provider in the United States. Uh, so she's right in the thick of social issues related to abortion, promoting abortion. Uh, and in her, in her uh, blog of this this past week, she writes this, uh, that there is a power struggle that has existed from the very beginning of the 120-year fight over reproductive rights. Every dictator... Uh, Joseph Stalin, Nikolai Ceausescu, uh, and Adolf Hitler has made anti-choice a central component of their agenda. So she goes back and she says, look, when you look at the dictators of history, I mean, the really bad dictators of history, uh, Joseph, uh, Joseph Stalin in the uh, former Soviet Union, Ceausescu, who was uh, the, uh, the, the president of Romania, uh, and of course, Adolf Hitler, uh, had pro uh, uh, or anti uh, um, uh, abortion policies, uh, which is a, a rather interesting way in order to make an argument. And what, uh, what Jane Fauna does not tell uh, her readers is something about the reasons why these men had uh, anti abortion policies. Uh, and in there, this, this idea of their agenda. And, and Jane, Jane Fonda mentions this. They, they made a anti made anti choice. That is, they made anti abortion a central component of their agenda. But she never says what their agenda was and why they were so anti abortion. Stalin's support for abortion had nothing to do with religion. I mean, the man was an atheist. Uh, it had everything to do with building up the military. In a uh, 2003 New York Times article. In, uh, titled Birth Control in Russia, uh, we find this uh, utilitarian reason for why he was anti-abortion. And I'm quoting now, in 1936, Stalin banned abortion to stimulate the birth rate in a widely resented decree that was dropped after his death. Stalin made it clear that the nation's couple should uh, produce workers and soldiers as vigorously as new Soviet industries were turning out trucks and steel beams. It had nothing to do with religious convictions. It was strictly utilitarian. The, the communist nation was falling. Uh, just like uh, you have to put up a, a wall to keep the East Berliners in East Berlin, 
Soviet Union had what has famously become known as the Iron Curtain. It kept people in. Uh, people were, were, were captives to the, to the Soviet machine. They didn't want to have children. They, they were, uh, many of them were alcoholic. This is the, the same case much of, uh, much of uh, Russia today. Uh, they were depressed about the future. They didn't have children. And so Stalin, because his whole worldview was based upon a, a military advance, was, was, was forcing people to have children because the Soviets needed soldiers in order to fight their wars around the, wor around the world. Uh, and by the way, Russia uh, today is losing population at a rapid rate, almost 700,000 annually. Uh, and so we were seeing not only in Russia, but in, in much of the rest of, of, uh, of, of Europe, of Western Europe and even parts of, of, of Eastern Europe, a birth dearth. Uh, families are, are, are not having children for a variety of reasons. And how about Romania? Uh, in 1966, uh, uh, women were aborting their children because they did not want to bring them up into the dark world of communism. In that same year, uh, Ceausescu issued decree number 770 prohibiting abortion, artificial contraception. And like like Stalin, Ceausescu was an atheist. He was not motiva motivated by religion because of this. He needed children because people were aborting, their, were aborting their children, and he needed those children to work in the factories and also to, to keep his, his military force up. His anti-abortion policies were, again, like Stalin, strictly utilitarian. And I'm quoting here, an attempt to build his country into a colossus through population growth. And there's an ironic twist to this. Ceausescu's anti-abortion policy, policies led to his downfall since it was the children born after the decree went into effect who took part in the revolution of, 18, of 1989 that led to the tyrant's execution. So yes, he, 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 he outlawed abortion and, and prohibited contraception, uh, but that ended up it, with, uh, with his death. And th that generation that grew up as a result of those decrees ended up starting a revolution and, and, and overturned uh, Romanian, um, the, the tyrants, uh, the tyrants in, in Romania. The next person that uh, you find uh, Jane Fonda appealing to is Adolf Hitler. And once again, uh, certain facts were ignored in her claim that tyrants are against abortion in the same way that those who grant personhood to the fetus are against abortion. Um, and what's interesting also by all this, you don't see Jane Fonda talking anything about the one child policy in China uh, that has been going on for quite some, some time. I won't rehearse the history here, uh, but ba let's get back to Hitler. Richard Weichart puts Hitler's anti-abortion policies in proper historical and ideological perspective. Listen to this. Hitler's opposition to abortion is sometimes portrayed as evidence of his traditional Christian moral values. However, Hitler never appealed to religion, God, or divine revelation to ground his opposition to abortion. Rather, he insisted on vigorous enforcement of extant anti-abortion laws because he considered German population expansion vital to the improvement of the Aryan race. Also, Hitler did not oppose abortion per se, but only abortion of healthy, um, but only abortion of healthy Aryan babies. Abortion was permitted, even encouraged or required for those who might produce inferior offspring or for Jews. The ultimate authority was not God, the Bible, religious tradition, or any fixed moral code containing the command, thou shalt not kill. Rather, for Hitler, the highest arbiter of morality and political policies was the evolutionary advancement um, of the human species. In the final analysis, Hitler based his morality on a racist form of evolutionary ethics. Claudia Kuhns is right when she argues that the Nazi ethic was a secular replacement, repudiation of traditional Christian ethics. And so it was Adolf Hitler who actually promoted abortion uh, for those he despised um, and uh, prohibited abortion for those uh, for, for his own Aryan race in order to uh, continue to populate his view of a millennial right.